all the pandemic and the silence that seems to have come across the land, you can't have church, you can't have church, you can do this and you can't do that. And even in mainstream society, there is this fear that comes into the land. But now we're beginning to see that being broken because now with pandemic crisis uh, behind us and God before us, there is marching orders that are coming to the church. Footsteps are being heard. The cadence is rising up and the voice of God is coming through his people. Invasion 2021 has now begun. And what Jesus is saying is, I've shown you a dimension. If I did it once, I can do it again. Invite your friends, invite your family, bring the lost, bring the sick, and let's believe for open heavens and for God to mark us on that night for His purpose. I am looking forward to being there again this year. And may I say to you that I really would like to see you at the conference. Seven. The glory of God's already set us up for a great move of God. What we have to do is come believing and receive. And when we do, we'll go back changed. And Man, after last year, if you haven't yet made plans to come to Invasion, you are outside your mind. You have got to get there. I know that God's going to meet with us in a powerful way. This year, there's going to be tremendous times of uh, fellowship and great speakers and powerful impartations. You don't want to miss Invasion Conference 2021. To become part of this movement, join us at our Invasion Conference 2021 on our scheduled times. Be excited, be ready, because God is causing us to march forward. Wow! Hey, praise the Lord. It's good to have you back with us on this Wednesday night, continuing what we started last week with uh, Pastor Tom. Good to have you with us again, Pastor. We're excited for where we're talking about the root of rejection and, and the different areas of that. And uh, tonight we're going to carry on this series a little bit further. want to let you know that now as you're watching, tomorrow night uh, we begin to see Invasion Conference kick off. Uh, Thursday night, tomorrow night, uh, we will see Invasion start off at 7 p.m. Great speakers throughout all day uh, or the evening of Thursday, all day Friday. Pastor John Kilpatrick will be with us Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, Lydia Morrow, uh, Michael Ivangood, Randall. We've got so many people coming in. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be incredible. We want to encourage you to be here in person. There's hotel rooms uh, already been uh, slated out in the area so you can get a discount. And we want you to try to be here in person. If you cannot, then of course we want you to be with us on the internet, www.crossti.org, or you can go to the YouTube channel. We have a great YouTube channel. Go on YouTube, type in Cross Tabernacle. When that comes up, put subscribe. Join our, our, our uh, Facebook and our uh, YouTube channels, and also uh, put like. And get this word out. This is uh, the new programs that we're starting up, and we will continue now. Got the new broadcasting booth uh, almost finished, and the cross with clarity. These programs are going to be doing a lot more airing, uh, gleaning from men of God like Pastor Tom and, and women of God to bring you quality discipleship especially during COVID, a good Bible word and teaching and, and the principles of applying the word of God in your life. And so let's just bow our heads and pray and let's get into this program. I'm excited. Father, today we thank you for everyone that's watching tonight and also will be watching through the archives. Father, we pray that your anointing be very powerful in their lives, Father. We pray, Father God, great blessings and encouragement. We are encouragers. We come against anything that would be discouraging. We bind any anxieties and fears and doubts. We release the body of Christ uh, to be strong and whole. And Father God, bless and anoint, Holy Spirit, uh, these words tonight in this program. And we give you glory and we give you praise. And with great excitement now, Father God, in great anticipation, we're moving in to this great season of this, not only this class tonight, but also into the outpouring services coming up, the Invasion 2021. We thank you, Father God, for your hand of mercy. Amen and amen. Well, Pastor Tom, let's just get started right back in. You can review to get us to where we're at or whatever you want to do okay amen yeah let's uh let's do a little bit of review um as the 
as the team is putting up the, uh, the graphic, um, I just want to say how excited I am about the Invasion Conference. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> we're, we're going to a different level. Yeah. God is taking America to a different level. I believe that. And, and this church is poised. I don't, I don't know how many of the congregation have been able to sense it and feel it mm-hmm. arising. Yeah. There's been an elevation arising going on every single week. Yeah. And I believe that the Invasion Conference is not going to be the pinnacle. No. But I believe that it's going to throw the doors wide open. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. A lot I'm, of hunger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of yeah. excitement. I think it's going to be crazy exciting. Well, put that back on the screen because this, what Pastor Tom has given you, guys, I'm telling you, this series, this last few weeks has been, I've been getting calls and emails. Uh, people are gleaning from what the wisdom that you're giving us. Amen. I want you to know that. It's making changes, life changes. Amen. And so tonight, uh, we're going to get deeper into this. Go ahead. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that. Uh, let's just do a real quick review. Last week, we went over the, the root causes of rejection. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on these because we really want to talk about the manifestations this afternoon. Um, but uh, one of the, the, the uh, number one cause, the manner or timing of conception. Uh, number two was um, in the mother's womb or in the utero. So did, the, did you want the child? Did you not want the child? The manner of birth, was it a birth with trauma involved? Um, number four, uh, the baby not being bonded to its mother. Uh, maybe it was born premature or sent out for adoption. Number five, um, if it was, in fact, an adopted child. Um, number four and number five really promote what we call the spirit of abandonment. Um, number six is hereditary rejection. And we're going to deal with some of those things today. Number seven, factors in the family home, uh, divorce, um, unequal treatment, that sort of thing. Number eight. Problems caused by teachers um, or schoolmates. Number nine, self-rejection um, caused by one's own attitudes. And then number 10, multiple causes later in life. So understanding those things, um, I, I really want to just kind of crawl into three different categories of, and you can take that, you can go ahead and take that down, guys. Um, three different categories of manifestations. Okay. Um, one category is aggressive reactions, self-rejection symptoms is another one, and measures to counter fear or rejection is the third. Mm. Now, the spirit of rejection, when it, when it grabs a hold of you, um, I've seen for myself anyways, items in each one of these categories that were manifesting in my life. Right. And that was actually one indicator to me as to the fact that I had issues that were that were deep seated that were not issues that I could just simply ask God to deal with. Right. I had to find the root and deal with it at a at a spiritual warfare level. That's good. You know, we, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Right. Although Amen. it feels like flesh mm-hmm. and blood. It does, right. It does. It I mean sometimes you just you just <clears throat> wish a devil would manifest so you could just <laughs> you know just, just you know, just kind of drop the hammer on him every once in a while, but we wrestle with flesh, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. So um, aggressive reactions, let's talk about some of them. Um, and, and as we get into some of these, understand that if, if we hit something and you're going, uh-oh, that's me, right. rejoice over that. Yes, amen. Don't fret over it. That's rejoice good. over it and write it down. Listen, grab a piece of paper right now. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to go grab a piece of paper and a pencil if you haven't already and write down these things as we talk about them that you feel are a part of your life. That's good. So the first one is refusing comfort. So you may have a spirit of rejection if you, if you refuse comfort. Why would that be? Because you're afraid of getting too close. Good. You're afraid that if people get too close, they're going to leave and reject you once again. Yeah. Or you're afraid that if people get too close, they're going to see something. Right that apparently everybody else has seen and and rejected you. (laughs) Um, Even though it's probably not there, that's just, so we refuse comfort. We reject other people. Again, same reasons, Mm -hmm. you know, we reject other people. Now, and it's also possible that any combination of these are working in unity. All under the heading of an aggressive reaction. Yes. So you're looking at these, uh, how I'm reacting. Exactly. Right? Exactly. In an aggressive way. Or, yes. Yeah. So I, I, I guess my point is you don't have to have all of these to be under to that. To be yeah. subject to the spirit sure. of rejection. Understand. Yeah. Um, uh, another one is harshness or hardness. 
you know, some man, you got a hard heart. Yeah. Well, I'm protecting it. Yeah. It's a yeah. protective mechanism. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I mean, you may think I'm hard, but I'm really just trying to, yeah. Trying to yeah. keep my heart from being broken sure. from rejection once sure. again. Sure. Um, skepticism or unbelief. Let me tell you something. Um, I used to be a skeptic. I, I didn't believe anything. <laughs> I mean, I believe the word yeah. of God. Right, right, but, right. But I didn't believe that man on the platform. I didn't believe yeah. that guy yeah. was, was all he was cracked up to be. Sure. You know, there's, right. there's got to be stuff in his life that's right. messing him up. Right. He, he, I mean, you know, he, he claims or she claims to be yeah. A, B, C, and D or be right. able to do this or pray mountains into the, into the, yeah. into the ocean like wax and yeah. be able to see things. But, man, I, I'm, I'm just not sure I believe that. Sure. So I, I used to be a skeptic, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize why. Right. I honestly, I hated myself for it. Right. I hated being there. I wanted to come into church and go, what? praise the Lord, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for that yeah. man on the platform. Right. I'm thankful for that woman that's ministering to us today. Right. I, used to, I wanted to be that, but I couldn't be until I was set free. Because there was flaws there. You were looking for flaws, right? Yes, yes, yeah. I was. Right, right. Um, unbelief, aggressive attitudes, swearing, or foul language. Mm, 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 mm. Come on. Come on. You ever hear Christians use foul language? Yes. I have. And then they fluff it off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Part of their language, vocabulary, and uh, it, uh, and then they might kind of joke it off. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I yep. know preachers that do that at times. <laughs> they always say, you know, preaching, if you're a preacher in the South, you're a preacher, you know, you cuss. Yeah. And they say that, you know, that's what they, acceptable character flow. Sure. Because, you know, God does, you know, when we deal with these things, Sometimes we use aggressive language because we have an aggressive nature. Yes. Because of a rejective spirit. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Argumentiveness. If you argue just for the sake of arguing, mm. you might have a spirit of rejection. Wow. Always be right. Yeah. Yeah, yep. sure. Got to have the last word. You spirit know, rejection. one of those people. I do. Yeah. Um, stubbornness, defiance. Rebellion. Now, you know, the scripture says rebellion is the same as witchcraft. Right. But what if you're rebelling out of the spirit of rejection, not witchcraft? Very possible. Could be. Absolutely. And, and if it's mislabeled by leaders or mislabeled by you, you may be praying against a spirit of rebellion mm. that the root is actually rejection. Ah, See yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And so what, what, what you're saying is, and a prime example is, if you go back and look at the ten roots of the could cause rejection, mm -hmm. and then what you're saying is every one of these roots have some type of an aggressive reaction to them. Yes. And, the, and that we have to evaluate, now why am I angry or why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Because, and then God can reveal, the Holy Spirit can soften that situation in your heart or whatever, to deal with it's the root. It's not always, sometimes the act of, uh, aggressive behavior is the fruit of that actual root. Right, that's right. Right? Yes. So you're, sometimes we want to deal with the reaction instead of with the root. Mm -hmm. That's and right. We, actually, they both need to be dealt with. But, the, yes. But yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the danger is if, if we haven't identified, if we've learned to coexist with one of these manifested reactions, what happens is, then that rebellion that was manifested through rejection can become witchcraft. Right. Because we've right. learned to coexist with it to the point where we allow it to manifest in our lives and not only allow it, we want it to. So, so what, what, that goes back again from the first session. Uh, predicated because foundation is the word of God. So if we're not careful, if we don't deal with these, it causes us to violate the principles of, of, of foundational word. Yes. So that we have hatred, mm -hmm. we have anger, mm -hmm. anger and sin not, hard mm -hmm. to do. Right. We understand that. And so it, we have to know the, the, the power of the word yes. and that we need to be so deep in the word into our heart because these things manifest. We don't want to violate God's word exactly in our lives because that could be passed on, violations, and then that could become witchcraft yes. because that's a place the enemy can work, a door or mm -hmm. window the enemy can work in yeah. for entry us point. to pass yep. it on. Yep. Yeah, good stuff, yep. bro. It's, it very easily is an entry point. Um, 
so yeah, so uh, rebellion, fighting, you know, witchcraft, you know, a lot of kind of stuff. So um, you had said something there that, that made me think, uh, you know, in the church, rejection is so rampant that there's, an, there's another, and this is, this is a psychological thing. If you talk to a, a counselor, um, they will tell you that this stuff happens, um, and that's called projection. Mm -hmm. So if we're not careful, and, and we're part of a church, and we're dealing with this spirit of rejection, we can project mm -hmm. that everybody is doing that. Everybody's dealing with that spirit, and, or a particular person is that right. God has sent to minister. Ah, good. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Um, we've got to know the Word of God, and it's not just we need to know it. Right. We need to know it. Amen. The congregation yes. needs to know it. Because, listen, I believe there's coming a day that, that all of this could be stripped away. Yes. And, and if, if your voice is silenced, my voice is silenced, mm -hmm. and all they have, all you have, is an opportunity wow. to live off of what you know from mm. the Word of God. Come on. If you don't have enough Word in you to be able to establish a foundation to work through some of these issues, let me encourage you to get into the Word of God. Come on. Read it daily. Um, I, I know you said, um, I don't remember if it was last year or the beginning of this year. Sometimes my memory fails me. Yeah. That uh, the Lord told you to read um, three different versions mm -hmm. of the yes. word this year, yes. front to, I mean, yes. all the way through. Yes. And so that's, I want to encourage you to do the same thing mm -hmm. if, if you don't know the word, because there will come a time mm -hmm. that you won't be able to stand based on what we know. Right. You'll have to stand on what you know. Good word. And what you know is what's going to be your anchor. Listen, we can, we can teach you, but we can't live it for you. We can live it for us. So good. And, you know, my grandmother used to teach it. She always used applications, you know, life things. Yes. She was like a parable grandma. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's and awesome. so, you know, she would take and remind you about the presence of the Lord in your life. She would say, right now, in the refrigerator and pantry is food for immediate use. Mm -hmm. Now, you have within your, your disposal elements that you can take fresh food and you can can it mm -hmm. and you can put it on that shelf in there and you can pull it out later. Amen. And you have the knowledge for it, and you have to, and you can, uh, and you have the elements for it. But unless you take that and combine that together and apply that, yeah. you'll never be able to draw it off of Amen. the shelf when you may need it. And I think that we failed a lot of an American church because we are in an entertainment mode, mm -hmm. and we always speak to the immediacy of a situation right. or an entertainment thing. But we're not instilling the importance of being able to take this word, like you said and put it back because mm -hmm. there may be a time that we can't go to pastor's That's pantry good. or pastor tom's pantry uh, or the internet that we may have to go to our pri exactly. private pantry yes. yeah. and draw to survive mm -hmm. or to maintain yeah good amen word. that's good yeah. that's a good word i love picture i do that grandma parables. taught me that. i, love, she I lived, love parables man that was her life she taught me like jesus you know amen smell the sulfur on that coal stove you know yeah yep. yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. amen it's good stuff uh, let's take a look at some of the self-rejection symptoms. Now, self-rejection is when you're not, you're not concerned about other people, you place the blame all on you. Mm. And so self-rejection means I'm deficient in some way wow. or they would accept me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? So the, the first wow. category, aggressive, is it's not me, it's them. The second category is it's all me. Right. It's all me. Eternalize it. Right. So uh, low self-image, uh, inferiority. Inferiority is one that I dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of your Christmas uh, uh, services, um, I, I spoke on that a little bit. Um, and huh? I, I think it, it, I just take a minute yes. to kind of review that for those people that didn't hear it on that Sunday morning. Um, when I was in the fourth grade, I missed every single word on the spelling test. And at the time, I thought it was the worst thing in the world. You know, um, fourth grade spelling is not that difficult. 
<laughs> it is for a fourth group. <laughs> well, I didn't just miss it once. Oh. Multiple times, every word was gone. Every word was missed. Um, they labeled me as learning disabled. I had a little speech impediment. They put me in LD classes. And LD classes um, is where you put mentally challenged kids. Yeah. And so I'm sitting in this class, and I'm looking around me, and I've got, I've got kids that I know I'm being labeled as, as they were labeled. Right. But I know that, that my deficiencies are not their deficiencies. Right. Nor are theirs mine. Or nor are mine theirs. Right. And so I'm looking at this, and I'm going, this doesn't feel right to me. I'm not, I mean, I don't feel dumb. But they were labeling me dumb and stupid and, 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 and all of those things. You know, you never make it in life, that sort of thing. Um, come to find out, when I was 35 years old, okay, so I'd gone through high school. My senior year in high school, I did not take a book home. Mm -hmm. I graduated with a high B average. The reason I, couldn't I didn't take a book home is because it would take me literally an hour to read one page. And I'm like, I, I don't have time to read 20 pages. Right. It's just not going to happen. So I didn't even take the book home. I would pay attention in class, and I got, you know, a high B average. Now, I look back on that now, and I think, Lord, I could have been a sinking valedictorian <laughs> if I'd have known what the sure. problem was back then. Sure. So I went through high school. I went through an associate's degree in laser electro-optics technology. Um, Still struggled in reading even through that degree, even though there was a lot of reading involved. It was more technical, mm -hmm. so it was a little bit easier. Then I got into uh, my bachelor's degree, and I'm forced to read again. And I'm sitting at home by myself, and, and when, I was, when I would read, it would just, nothing would make sense. Yeah. It, comprehension was, comprehension you, you was, was just set, not. so hard on reading that you wouldn't. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. It was just horrible. So I got frustrated, and I slammed the book shut. I had been an hour on one page. I slammed the book shut, and I said, God, this is stupid. I said, who writes like this? And I took the book and literally threw it across the, the room. And I'm glad Janice wasn't there to see me throw that fit. <laughs> but uh, the Holy Spirit said, go pick up the book. And this is where I turned into a five-year-old. I said, nope. He said, go pick up the book. Nope. And I don't know about you guys, but when the Lord, Lord speaks to me, yeah. he never changes his tone from the initial word yeah. if it's the same word. Yeah. And he's like, go pick up the book. Nope. Go pick up the book. Nope. Not going to do it. Go pick up the book. And at that point, I thought, he's not going to relent. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So I went and picked up the book, and he goes, open the book. And I said, nope. You said pick it up. So I'm still a five-year-old. Janice would not disagree with that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So anyways, I finally opened the book, and literally, words and phrases were highlighted. The Holy Spirit highlighted those pages and revealed to me at the age of 35, at the age of 35, revealed to me that I was dyslexic. Now, back in junior high school, nobody knew what that was. No, it's true. I mean, it's known now, but nobody right. knew what it was back then. Right. But knowing that I was dyslexic, but yet I was labeled all those labels. I was dealing with inferiority. I was yes. dealing with rejection. I was dealing with multiple things because it was always me. Wow. I would walk into a room, even as a pastor, I would walk into a room and it didn't matter if, if my church had a hundred folk in it and everybody, every other pastor had 20, I would put myself at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy that I would think of success in no, numbers because right. it's really not, but no, that's kind of what pastors do sometimes. Sure, they do. Um, forgive me for that. But so anyways, at the age of 35, I realized what the issue was. So I, I, the Lord revealed to me that I was moving phrases in mm. a sentence, not, not words, not letters, phrases. Yeah. So it didn't make sense. Right. And so I was able to read at the age of 35. I started reading. Um, I read my first book cover to cover mm -hmm. at the age of 35. I, I enjoy reading to learn. You'll never catch me reading a novel. Yeah. It's not right. fun for me, right. but I enjoy it to learn. Right. So I find it interesting that this kid that was labeled dumb, stupid, with a speech impediment, now speaks for a living yeah. in front of people. Yeah, right. <laughs> God's it got is. a sense of humor, he does. doesn't he? 
But the enemy was trying to take away that identity he's seen your so future. that I would never be able to do that. He knew your call. Right. So a year ago, uh, January 2020, it was the very first Sunday. The Lord had been dealing with me all of December because every December I go through this self-evaluation, mm -hmm. uh, just me and the Lord. And so all of December the Lord had, of 19, the Lord had been dealing with me concerning um, just why business wasn't successful. And, and so I'm asking God, is it me? You know, what's wrong with me? Because I'm making good business decisions, sound business decisions, and things just aren't working right for us. And it came to a climax on that first Sunday of 2020. Mm -hmm. We're sitting right back here, third row back, and you started your message, and you, you said something about a minute in, and I looked at Janice, and she goes, what? And I go, she knew the journey I was on. Right. I said, I can't stand that man. <laughs> I said, I just, I cannot stand him. And she starts laughing because <laughs> she knew what you just said yeah, really hit yeah. home with yeah. me. And so I, I, I don't remember anything else sure. that you preached because right. from that, that moment, moment, it was me and the Holy Spirit dealing with stuff. Yes, sure. And so you gave an altar call. I came down to the altar, and the Lord revealed to me while I was sitting there and while you were preaching that I was dealing with a generational spirit of inferiority. Whew. 55 years old. Thank and I'd, I mean, I'd learned to All your life. cope with it or live with it. Yeah. You know, I've yeah. learned to live with it, to coexist yes, with it. To, right. This is how Tom gets by. This yeah. is now most people don't think. I even had people Sunday that Sunday morning mm -hmm. afterwards. I had some folks come mm -hmm. to me and say, "I never would have never guessed yeah. that you had those struggles." Yeah. Well, I I don't carry myself like I struggle. No. That's a struggle between me and God. Exactly. But, and, and I think that I wasn't in denial. Right. I knew there was something wrong, sure. and I was taking it to the Lord, but he had to reveal to me what the mm -hmm. root was. I sat on the floor, Indian style, yeah. and broke it. Mm. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, now your sister and brother are dealing with it also. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So Monday morning when I got to the office, I explained to my sister what had happened, and she just starts bawling. And I go, what? Why are you crying? She goes, I had no idea that you dealt with that. She said, I've dealt with it my whole life. I said, what? Now, her and I hit it. Right. Right? Right. But we looked at each other, and we almost started laughing because our brother, he didn't hide it. Yeah. He was the right. aggressive guy. <laughs> it, it played out the exact, exact same thing. generational spirit yes, only played he, out in him yeah. through aggression. Wow. So he would, wow. be, he, would, he would feel rejected, and he would get angry, mm -hmm. and he would get mad because mm -hmm. he would feel like that people aren't giving him enough credit. And right. They, right? Yeah. So the very next Saturday was the first time the three of us could get together. We got together in the prayer room there at, at the office. That you've been in many times. Yes, I have. Yeah. And for the first time in our lives, we prayed together. We, we talked and prayed together for almost three hours. Come on. And we broke that spirit off of our Come lives. Come on. And you know, almost instantly, the business started Change. profiting. Which really? Shifted? Immediately. Wow. That's so it, it had nothing to do with my business intellect. It had everything to do with dealing with the spirit of rejection. Yeah. As the spirit yeah. of inferiority had sure. taken root in me. Powerful stuff. That's awesome, man. Powerful stuff. Wow. You know, as you're saying this, I'm reflecting back to Josh, my oldest son, had the disability problems. Uh, so bad that in grade school, uh, they told me that we need to hold him back because he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. and they said, you know, if you hold him back, uh, his sports would carry him through. That's what they told me. So if you hold him back, he will play varsity earlier, and that will, that will be his goal to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I was really upset. I said, no, 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 no. We're not holding him back. We're pushing him and elevating him forward. I went from there, sat him down, and said, listen, uh, you have dyslexic. You had some problems, just like you said. And I said, you can use this as a crutch, or we can use this to propel us to be strong mm -hmm. and go through this. You know, from that conversation and that support that we had, we got him tutored. We took care of him through the years. He graduated in regular uh, math class mm -hmm. and everything, went on to college. Now, he went into college, and he was struggling with uh, uh, some testing. 
the professors got a hold of him, brought him in and said, listen, we know you're bright. You know this. Because the hands-on technical stuff, right. that cat was a genius. He mm -hmm. still is whiz -bang. So those professors, God bless them, took him, and when they had testing, they would sit down and give him a verbal test. Come on. That's and awesome. they sat down, and them, his, all of his professors loved him because they seen potential in him. Mm -hmm. they, they mentored him. They went a step beyond in their teaching. And they took him through a verbal test, aced him. Today, as he's been about 15 years now, as in a major uh, university, he is the uh, uh, the, ma uh, the, uh, uh, the director of media and teaches classes. That's awesome. In a, ma in a university and, and and on staff. So, this is what you're dealing with is is I think rampant in the churches today. Amen. And the, it, it only takes a moment of a turnaround like you and with Josh that can change someone's total direction. Yes. Plus it also set in place a generational blessing to his kids. I see it happening because yeah. mm -hmm. his one oldest boy had struggled, or a youngest boy had struggled, and now he is helping him through the same path. Come on. Yeah. See? This is incredible. It's powerful. It and is. It's, it's interesting that you said they, that the society tried to tell you to make it sport. They did. What's interesting in that is that was my go-to. Yeah. I was, wow. always, I was always small, but I was really fast. Mm -hmm. So anytime we'd go to recess, I was the first one picked. Mm -hmm. mm. So I may be dealing with rejection in the, in the classroom. But dealing with rejection is who this guy is. But right. when this guy steps on the field, yeah. I'm accepted. Yeah. And so that became my go-to. Now, here's, here's what happened when I turned 45, and I couldn't play sports anymore. Come on. Where's my identity? Wow. My identity, you see, the enemy used, yeah. you were smart enough to catch this yeah. with your boy. Right. My, the enemy used athletics to become my identity. And we see that, don't we? Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. Big time. Wow. So wow. even though I would say, hey, you know, my identity's in Christ, it wasn't until I couldn't play anymore. When I tore my rotator wow. cuff, I couldn't play anymore. Right. That I'm challenged going, who am I? Wow. Who, I mean, really, who am yeah. I? Because wow. I was always Tom, the fastest, the fastest guy that anybody. You I know, mean, you know that's powerful because you know we see that we deal with different generations of kids and all, and we see that they could have been a jock in high school, uh, this galactic side. Some of them bumped them along so that they could be mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. field because they were exceptional, but but not good enough to make a college level or right. or a pro, mm -hmm. semi pro. So when they stepped out into the out of high school, graduated, their identity was so stripped yeah. that that they felt useless. They did mm -hmm. they didn't you know the college really because of the intellect uh, the, the academia wasn't pushed. Uh, now they're suicidal. Now they go off into hurts, habits, hangups, or they marry out of you know just a bad marriage. Right. We see this down this swift downfall. Now when we go to this, I think about and I don't know if you may like him or not, but remember Bobby Knight. Oh yeah. Bobby Knight was Bobby Knight. He's angry. He had issues. He did, yeah. You know that. Uh, but for every one of us that watched him throw a chair, we probably had to deal with too. But, <laughs> right. but one thing about Bobby Knight was Bobby pushed his players academically. Yes. If you remember that. Mm -hmm. He made sure they were as good in the classroom. And a lot of those guys become doctors and lawyers, and they were very successful. But it wasn't just about playing ball to him, although he was one of the greatest right. winning coaches at the yeah. time. But he pushed them to excel in other areas to build their whole identity. Amen. And I think that the enemy, like you say, what you're painting, some of us have an identity. The enemy will trick us into thinking we have an identity, mm -hmm. but we have a chink in that that he'll push somewhere along the line to strip us of that. Exactly. And that's really what he's after. If he can steal your identity, he steals your purpose. Wow. Wow. I hope you guys are hearing this. I hope you hear this today. And no matter what age, what Tom's telling you was powerful because no matter what age you're at, you can break this. Yes, absolutely. And move, absolutely. On, move on like you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. Powerful stuff. So um, back to self-rejection symptoms, uh, low self-image, inferiority, insecurities, um, inadequacy, always feeling inadequate. Like yeah. I just, I'm just not able to make it. Sadness, grief sorrow, self-accusation, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if something goes wrong, you're always pointing the finger at you first, so, you know, self-accusation, 
Self-condemnation. Wow. If you know somebody that's a cutter, yeah. they are likely suffering from rejection yeah. and they're dealing with self-rejection issues. Come on. So they're cutting. They say they cut to feel pain because they're numb. Mm -hmm. But it, it really, the root of it is self-condemnation. Yeah. Right? Yes. Self-condemnation, yes. um, inferiority, those types of things. Um, continuing on this list, inability or refusal to communicate. So true. Yeah. So true. It is. Fear of failure, fear of others' opinions, and among other fears. You know, what's interesting is even, even though I was dealing with all of that stuff, I, could, I, I didn't care what people thought about me. Mm-hmm but I cared what people thought about yeah, me. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, it, it, it sounds really strange. I was walking down a hallway of, um, I, when I was working Fortune 500 company, I was in the human resources department, and I was walking down a hallway, and, and there was an individual that was from New York that was there visiting, a high-up fella. And we were the only two in the hallway, and we passed, made eye contact, and I said, hey, how you doing? Dude straight up ignored me. Straight up ignored me. And he kept walking, and I stopped. I turned around, and I go, hey, I don't know who you think you are, but you put your pants on the same way I do, buddy. And I turned around and kept walking. <laughs> now, that was a rejection. Man, that was you, re you reacted. That was, yeah, that was a reaction from, from re the spirit of rejection. Sure, but sure. yet, I didn't care what he thought. No. Good, you know what good, I mean? Good old story. Absolutely. I, I didn't care what that guy was thinking at yeah. the time. Yeah. But... If somebody's close to me, mm -hmm. I care what you think. Yeah. I care what you think about yes, me. Yes, sir. Wow. You know? Wow. I care what Janice thinks about me. Yes. I care what Caleb thinks about me. Yes. And Bree and J I care what those people think about me that's close. Yes. If you're not close to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so it, it's interesting. It is. That that's even though word. the fear of others and the fear of their opinions mm -hmm. is, is a part of this. Yes. It wasn't a part of mine. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? I do. I do. So. And then we've got anxiety, worry, depression. And so anxiety, you know, Scripture says, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, yes. make your request be made oh, known Lord. unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Anxiety leads to depression. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if, if you're dealing with rejection to the point where you become anxious and you don't understand why there's an anxiousness about you, ask the Lord if it is the spirit of rejection. Right. Very because there's, I think there's a lot of people that are dealing with depression because anxiety leads into depression. Mm -hmm. Sure. And they don't want to be depressed, obviously. They don't know why they're depressed. You know, they, they may even, okay, I, I've got a happy wife, happy life. I've got good kids. I've good. got, why am I dealing with depression? Maybe it's a spirit of rejection. That which, is a self-rejection Which issue. we see people all the time that they're very successful. But they just, just, they just disintegrate. They're yeah. like, you know, got all the things and what in the world to commit suicide or whatever. It could be. But, but, uh, I, and I do know people, and you do, as being in ministry for years, is you'll get people that will get up to a certain level, and then they self-destruct. Yes. It's like they, they do it on purpose. They don't think that they can go past this level. So then they build up, and they're going really good, and they're doing good, and all of a sudden, boom. And when you start dealing with this, nine times out of ten, I found, and I know you have, that it is a root of a rejection yes. that brings up that I don't deserve That's to it. do this. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And so uh, uh, to get through that, I've seen them just blow the top off the ceiling once you get them past that risk. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, we, we have multiple times dealt with um, divorced women mm -hmm. that have gone through um, our, our sessions, mm -hmm. and their biggest issue was, why do, I, why do I keep dating guys that abuse me? Same as the husband I got rid of or... Wow, so true. Why, why, and again, it goes to that deep calls into deep. Right. Right? It's all I deserve. It's, that's all I deserve. Yeah. It's all yeah. I deserve. Yeah. I don't, I don't deserve anything yeah. more. They rejected me because there was something wrong with me. Yep. Wow. Yep. Man, I hope you people are just getting a hold of this today. I feel a lot of deliverance coming through uh, yes. uh, in, this, in this. I really Amen. do. Uh, negativity. Pessimism. You know, the glass is always half empty. Mm. Mm. You're an eternal pessimist. Uh, that is a sign of, of rejection. 
hopelessness or despair. And, you know, wow. going back to the word, I, I think one way to combat the spirit of rejection is through proper teaching of the word. Yes. And, and I think that some of the new revelation, if, if you will, I mean, it's, it's the old word, but I think God is continually bringing new revelation to his word, at, at least for me anyways. The scripture that says rejoice over tribulations. Yeah. Be happy when things come against you. Be happy when things yeah, come against yeah, you because, yeah, yeah. because tribulation leads to perseverance. Perseverance yes, leads yes. to yes. character. Character leads to hope. Yes. So if we teach people how to be happy with, not, not like, woo, I'm being tribulated. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. No, no. Romans tells us that we're tried and tempered in our faith. There's this tempering that takes yes. place because of the testing of our faith. That's it. And I, I think you're right. I think that in the society we live in now, uh, to be the guru of the pulpit, you got to be very so topical that it's uh, more self-helps, mm -hmm. seven ways to do this, six ways to do that, five ways to be that. But it's always uh, success in it with, without the reality of the testing yes. or, the, or the trial that takes place or that the Lord will move things in to, to build our character. Yes. Because we have a flaw that has to come to the front. And I think you're dead on on that. I think that, that people are so in need today, Pastor, to be taught hope. Yes. And, and, and that if you're going through a thing, know that God's on your side. And that he'll, and it's a he'll temporary see thing. Exactly. There you go. That's a good word right there. It's not permanent. Right. It's not a way you got. You're always that way. You're always going to be that way. You don't have to be that way. Right. And I think people need to realize that. And they'd be encouraged to know that God's got a better plan for you. Absolutely. Yeah. So in an attempt to connect the dots, um, what, what we find is that you've got people that have this cycle in their life, right? That's a negative cycle. Mm. They don't understand why that negative cycle is there. Um, but because the tribulation seems to be eternal... Wow, come on. They begin to lose hope and they begin yeah. to lose the ability to persevere. Yeah. So if, if we can teach the, the people that if there's a cycle, there's a reason it's a cycle. <laughs> come Let's on. break that reason. Now tribulation becomes temporary. Wow. Character is built. Wow. Perseverance is observed and you've got hope like nobody's business. And your witness explodes. Absolutely. That draws people to you. Because you've got deliverance and you've got freedom. Mm -hmm. And so there'll be somebody going through something you can help them with excellence. Yes. You can walk them through. Absolutely. Because you have obtained victory or deliverance or breakthrough in those, serious, in those areas. And I, I absolutely believe that the areas that we've overcome are areas that God wants us to minister I to believe. others in. I'm with you on that. No doubt. Yeah. That's why it seems like, well, you know, why does God draw these people to me? Well, because you've got victory. Exactly. And they need to hear the victory that you have because you're a whip, you're a vessel that he works through. Yeah. And he wants to pour all that that in you into someone else. Amen. Yep. Yeah, I, man, that's good stuff. Really. If 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 you are I mean there was the Dead Sea because there was no outlet. Yes. There was an inlet Come but there on. was no outlet. So Come on. So we can sit in church and take it in, take it in, take it in, just become a fat Christian. But if we don't find someone to release it to Right. Then we're right. just the Dead Sea. Exactly. Right? Yeah, we're just a sponge that just sucks it in with no outlet. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Good word. So let's move on to measures um, to counter rejection. So this is basically um, the, the, the first category again was I'm blaming somebody else. Second category is I'm blaming me. And then this category is these are things that we do to cover it up. Mm. To deal with it, mm -hmm. to to learn Put to live up, with it. Under the rug type exactly. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so striving or achievement, performance, mm -hmm. competition. Yeah. You know, I had people tell me my whole life, "You're the most competitive person I've ever mm -hmm. met." Yeah. Well, now we know why. Yeah. Yeah. Now we know why. Yeah. I was dealing with that rejection. Compensating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to think it was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know? Sure. Hated to lose. Yeah. Hate it. Still yeah. hate to lose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's under yeah, the blood now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, independence, isolation, or self-protectiveness. Now, those are really big because there's nothing wrong with being independent as no. long as you've submitted yourself to someone that can hold you accountable. Yeah. So independence is great, but it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. 
if there's no one that you're accountable to, you're living in a danger zone. Yeah, you, and I always tell it this way. You are independent to be dependent. Yes. You make yeah. that choice to depend on the Lord or set under a, 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 a manifolded five-fold ministry type. Mm -hmm. But so you're independent into making the right choices, but enough to know that outside those realms, you can get in trouble real quick. Yes. Yeah. And yep. you sweep things under, or we justify that. Yeah, we justify yeah, it. You know, it's okay. Yeah, we cast that's the word here. That's just the way he yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. That's the way God made me. Exactly. But it yeah. wasn't. No, no. <laughs> Good word, man. Uh, Self-centeredness. Selfishness. Self-justification. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Self-righteousness. Wow. So these are some things that if you think about, as I was laying, then don't name names, but as I was, as I was naming those things, there were images of people's, people's popping faces mind. popping in my mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. I know are dealing with these things. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going, okay, now when I see that, now when I see that, I don't get angry and go, no. who do they think they are? Exactly. When I see that now, knowing what I know, I have grace towards them. Right. And my prayer is, God, bring someone to their path or give me an opportunity to speak into their life right. in such a way that they will receive an understanding of what they're dealing with. You see, and that's the ministry heart, and that's, folks, you get a hold of this. This is so important, that you predicate everything back on the Word so that you can be a living Word to someone else and understand something. When you walk through these things and put these roots under the blood, then, as Pastor Tom said, when you run up with someone or something, the spirit of offense doesn't give on, get on you because you begin to think about, well, that waitress was rude to me, but it's not because of me, I didn't get offended by it. They're going through something. Now, when they come back by, that's when all of a sudden the spirit of God may give you one word on. or something to say or a question to ask that will throw them into the mode of being being ministered to. Yes. You see, ministry heart comes into your mind. When we get free of these things, we're able to be used to help others that we identify that. I re can remember sitting in church and, and have being full of all kinds of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, uh, when I thought of somebody, I said, boy, I wish something, they, they were here, this is for them. Yeah. Boy, if, if Bill was here, or right. Bob was here, or John was here, or <laughs> yeah. Jack was here, or Betty was here, mom, dad, whatever, if they were here, by golly, that's for them. And God's saying, no, you dummy. It's this is about you. Right. And yeah. so, man, this is so good, man. It's so important because it's about ministry minded hearts. Yes. You can't do that when you're full of this. Right. You can't. No. You can't. <clears throat> it reminds me of a, a time we, we had just started the church and this is back when WBAK was its own own network. Yes. It was still owned separately mm -hmm. from WKHI. And I called to find out what it would cost to get a program, yeah. a Sunday morning program. And I, the uh, young lady answered the phone, um, and I introduced myself as, you know, Pastor Tom Simmons with Salt Dealers Worship Center at the time. And I told her what I was looking for. I mean, she was as curt and rude and mean. And I'm thinking, good Lord, what, what did I do to this woman? Holy Spirit said... She's had a bad experience with pastors. Ease her mind. Tell her you don't want to deal. And I said, T time out for a second. I said, I don't know what you've dealt with in the past. But I said, I'm not looking for a deal. I just want to know what your prices are. And if God sees fit for me to be on TV, right. he will give me the finances to pay what you're asking. Yeah, not I'm not looking for a deal. Yeah. It, her attitude changed like that. And you know what she said? Thank you. That is so refreshing. Come on. To hear a pastor say that. Yes, sir. And that in and of itself, if the conversation was over, that ministered to her. Yes, sir. Because she realized, and I'm assuming she wasn't a Christian. Right. That's only an assumption, sure. but right. she realized that's not the way the it works. Preachers are. We're not tight wads and trying to get a break. Exactly. Pay our way. Right. Exactly. Right. So, Good word. God gives us the ability to minister through yes. this stuff. Good stuff. Amen? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We're probably getting short on time. Let's, let's kind of buzz through these things. Uh, Self-idolatry. Wow. That's huge. Very huge. Huge. Um, criticism. Mm. Someone is quick to criticize or place judgment. Mm. Here's a big one in the church. Envy and jealousy. Right. Well, why do they get to do that? Yeah, right. 
I've been in church longer than them. Yeah. Yeah, I deserve that. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've been at this church. I've been a tither yeah. longer than they have. Yeah. How come they get, yeah. th- get the better. opportunities? Be, yeah. Yep. Yep. Or, you know, you get to that, and, and that, and that di- comes under that idolatry thing. That song was, I did it my way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You didn't do anything your way, pal. That's There's right. a lot of people in your way that helped you get to where That's you're right. at. And sometimes we want to take it like, you know, I'm a work, you know, I, I, nothing was given to me. I've worked hard for everything I've got. You and about 900 million other people have. So what makes you so special? Right. You know, work blesses you. So, so the way we deal with our attitude uh, reflects on how we can deliver to others. Yes. Right. Freedom yes. or, or, Absolutely. yeah, or attitudes. Yeah. This is huge self idolatry. It's big. It is big. Yeah. It is yeah. big. Big. And it's, 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 it's big on the platform. Absolutely. No doubt. It's, it's big. Yes, sir. Not in this church. No, but, uh, but it it's is, big. It's a spirit in, that can get into music, yes. into pastors, any ministry leadership. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. So we've got to be very, it's, it's, it's big actually in any form of leadership. It is. Right. Um, it's a downfall. Within the church, of within the business realm. Mm-hmm. I see it in the business realm. Well, that's I can become God. Yeah. You know, I make the decisions around here. You know, I always tell people, if you've got to tell someone who you are, then you aren't who you think on, you are. That's right. You know, I'm the pastor. I'm the leader. Yeah. I'm the. If you got to tell them that, uh, then you probably are not. Exactly. That. That's You're exactly just carrying right. Carrying the word, the title. Yeah. Right. Because then the scriptures say that that the anointing will set you before men. Right. Your gifts. Your yeah. gifts. Your well, anointing yes, will set you before exactly. kings. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You don't have to say anything. No. Just just function. Exactly. Have you ever walked into a room and every head in the room turned and looked at you? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not because you were making noise. No. It's the authority. Because the anointing that exactly. you carry. Exactly. It's true. It's the anointing yes. you carry. The atmosphere changes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. When you're living mm-hmm. free. I'm a big, firm believer in that. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no spirits can attach to you if you're walking with that freedom. That's right. And then, and those that are in that atmosphere that are bound by that, that spirit will begin to reckon that you're in there. Just yeah. like they did with Jesus. You know, the demonic, what are you here to torment us before our time? Yeah. Why are you here? Mm-hmm. You know, well, by the way, just shut up, sit down, and get out of here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yep. so, but yeah, I agree with you on that. That's why it's so important that we walk with this freedom and we walk exactly. with this so that we can be more effective for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can live more in the authority of who God's called us to mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. Denise right? Shaw, by the way, has written a good book. It's a plug yes. for her book on the believer's authority. And Amen. it's so powerful. And it's on Amazon. Denise Shaw, go there and you can get it Kindle. And you can get that book. And it is in that book, in the last chapter of that book, is probably one of the most anointed uh, uh, illustrations mm-hmm. on, on uh, authority uh, through the custodian. You're a custodian. She uses a school system uh, uh, to, to bring forth the different authority levels. And, mm-hmm. and it basically she emphasizes that the custodian has the keys to every door yes. in the place. And so, how, and she goes through the authority of the believer. So again, that's a little plug there that goes right along sure, with what you're absolutely. saying. Absolutely, walking in the authority, walking in yeah. that authority. And when you're when you're living free, you also walking in the authority. Absolutely. Or you have a better opportunity to. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, so pride, egotism, haughtiness, arrogance. These are things that we do to cover up. Mm. So if you see somebody that's full of pride, your first thought should not be man, I hate that person, or right. man, that spirit of pride, you know, often we quote the scripture, pride goeth before a fall, yeah. knock them down, Lord. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Instead exactly. of saying, you know, Father, they're dealing with something yeah. that's causing that pride to rise up, let's, let's, let's pray that there would be revelation as to what the root of that is. Wow. Right? There's a freedom there, too. There is. When you're men- there is a freedom. You can't, when you can't, the devil can't throw trash on you. Right, you're not you don't you you're not a a, a a a landfill anymore where they back up and dump on you. That's you right. see, and it, and it weighs you down. The, you don't get caught up in the gunk. You become the solution to the situation. Yes. Yeah. You know, John 15 and 16. They, those two chapters, you'll never find what I'm getting ready to say in those chapters verbatim, mm-hmm. but it's laced all the way through both chapters, and that is we are supposed to be in the world but not of it. Right. And, and I think what understanding this ministry and understanding the spirit of rejection does for us is it allows us to be in it but not of it. Right. It allows us to see it. Sure. And, and my, again, picture analogy of that is when you jump into a swimming pool, you don't become water. Right. But you, gotta, but you do get wet. Yes. 
So when you get out, you just dry off. Right. So when we go into the world, we may, we may get in the world, but when we step back out of it, we just dry off. Exactly. But we've got to be in it in order to be able to bring change to it. You know, and that's a good word, Tom, because a lot of people today think they have to isolate out, pull your children out completely out of the world. And that's not what Scripture teaches. You have to understand that Jesus hung out with tax collectors mm -hmm. and publicans Come on. and harlots. And even, listen, this is hard for people to understand, but you know he really had a heart for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Although they come against him, he was constantly in the mode of ministering to them in a way that Nicodemus came to Christ at night. Yes. And, yep. and, and was very effective in bringing him off the cross and ministering to him after his death. Mm -hmm. You know, so we begin to find something very powerful here that if we'll learn to get rid of these roots and get this stuff out of our lives, we can be more effective in the way that we understand that we're out here in the world. And yes, we are, man. And it's ugly out there right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it from is. the billboards to 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 the political realm, to to the COVID, everything's going on. Uh, we still cannot isolate ourselves in a bubble. Christ right. wants us to be a witness. Amen. Go ye. Amen. That means get out there in the midst of this stuff yes. and show victory and boldness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And this stuff gives you the ability Absolutely. to mentally. Great tool. Yes. You, yeah, because I, 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 a lot of people want to be out there, but they feel deficient. Right. This right. brings freedom Absolutely. from that deficiency. Yeah. So yes. you got. So now you can walk out and say, "I'm walking out in the boldness of Christ." Yes. Not Tom. No. Not not me. No. But in the boldness of Christ. Yes. I've got confidence in mm -hmm. His blood, mm -hmm. in His name. Yes. Not in not in this no. guy. No. You know, because this guy's just not. I no. mean, this guy's lucky to put his shoes on a yeah. time in the morning. Right. Well, I'm wearing non-laceable yeah. shoes, so. But you know, <laughs> here here and you hear this so many times. Take this to the marketplace. Uh, how many times have you talked to restaurant owners or, or, or waitresses that tell you that they dread Sunday? Yeah, yeah. They do not like Sundays because Sunday is the most nastiest people, mm -hmm. the most non-tipping people, no, non-appreciative people in the world. What a sad scenario that is that they're speaking about the church that gets out of their glory cloud, you know, their little, their little parties, and then they go into public where that's, we're called to go ye out. Mm hmm and be some of the worst, nastiest witnesses, cheapest people. That the, it's, that, that it's a shame when the world treats them better than we do. I agree. I tell people, if they, if they ever ask, and sometimes when they don't ask, I tell them anyways, if you go out and you want to be a witness, your minimum tip should be 20. I agree. Minimum no tip should be that. 20%. No. Minimum. Yeah. If you, if you don't have enough to leave a 20% tip, don't eat as much. Yeah. Yeah. So that we you can need. tip. Yes. Yes. Because that is a witness. That is a witness. Good word, man. Um, and we're, we're manipulation, yeah. possessiveness. We're just about, mm -hmm. we're almost done here. Mm -hmm. uh, manipulation, possessiveness, emotional immaturity, and perfectionism. Uh, again, these are things that we can easily identify. Right. But here's the issue within the church. It's easy for me to sit here and have issues with inferiority, but see manipulation on you. And say, Lord, they, they need to deal with that manipulation. Yeah. Well, what's the scripture say? Then it then it talk about how can you how can you pull the plug or pull the splinter plank. out of your brother's eye without eye. pulling the log yeah, out of your own. Exactly. Splinter and plank. Right. So so I've got a log in my eye. I've got something in my spirit, mm. something that's that's rooted mm. to me through mm -hmm. a yoke mm -hmm. that I've got to clean up. Yes. Here's and, and if you look at somebody and you accuse them of any of these things. That's an indication that you're dealing with one of these things, that you're dealing with a re spirit of rejection, because if you're not dealing with the spirit of rejection, you're going to look at him and go, Holy Spirit, give him revelation. You're going to have compassion. Yes. Your reaction will be as you'll look on the multitude of Jesus Christ, and you'll have great compassion on them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's really when you know that breakthrough has come. Absolutely. Man, I'm, I've lived this through my life, especially in ministry, so much, Tom. You know that, and you know that because you have to. That that anymore, you, it's just hard to let that stuff take hold of you because yeah. all of a sudden you're just broken for that person. Absolutely. Because what you see, especially as men of God or leaders, you see cycles in people. In other words, they just can't keep the break out of it. Right. Whether it's an addictive cycle, whether mm -hmm. they go they church hop, 
Mm -hmm. Whether they job hop. I know some people that are just yep. constantly going mm -hmm. through job. And if they just learn to settle down in God long enough to let God minister to them, Come on. Uh, they, their whole life would change immediately. Absolutely. We're running out of time. I want you to bring this thing together in a way, and then I want you to just pray the release, if you okay. will. Okay. All right, for sure. Um, I think what it really comes down to, church, is this. Recognizing that you've got a deficiency does not make you deficient. Right. What it, what it means is there's something in your life mm. that was not supposed to be there, even if you feel like you've lived with it your whole life. That's very good. Whether it be generational, whether it be something that's there because of a sin you committed or sin that was committed against you, there's a yoke there that God wants to break. He sent wow. Jesus to the cross so that his blood could break it. And he wants you to be free, and he wants you to be free indeed. So I'm getting ready to pray, and I, I, I'm just going to kind of flow in the, in the spirit here and as the Lord gives, um, gives me wisdom, if he gives me wisdom. If he doesn't, we'll just pray and, and call it a night. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just believe that many that are watching are dealing with things that you don't understand yet. And so as we pray, I want you to be praying and asking the Holy Spirit to give you revelation. And to give you revelation of these items that you wrote down as we've gone through this, to give you revelation of, of that root. And listen, if, it, if, if you've got multiple items here, you're dealing with rejection. Yeah, right. So we will pray whenever we begin to pray. Just I want you to just put your hand on your forehead. Come on. And just break that spirit of rejection. Mm. And so it kind of, well, I'll just lead you through it. I'll lead you through it. Father, in Jesus' name, Yes. we just thank you for being a mighty God. Sure. I thank you, Father, that no demon in hell can penetrate the bloodline of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that every single place that Jesus bled yes. was for our redemption, mm. was so that we would be able to be free and be free indeed, to walk in the fullness yes. of what you've purposed us to be and who you've purposed us to be wow. in the authority in which you've purposed it. You've given us the keys of the kingdom. And you said, whatsoever we bind on earth would be bound in heaven. Wow. Whatsoever we loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. So, Father, we stand in that authority right now. Holy Spirit, I ask right now, mm. if you're at home, I want you to just reach your hand towards the screen and just begin to pray. Pray in the Spirit. Father, I pray right now that you would give revelation to individuals right now. Give them revelation of yokes, of entry points. Right now, Jesus, if they're dealing with a spirit of rejection, wow. which one of these ten entry points wow. did it come from? Yes, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, if the Lord has revealed something to you, I want you just to place your hand on your forehead. Mm -hmm. And repeat after me, Father, mm. I thank you for being a mighty God. Yes, Jesus. I give you permission to be my God. I give you permission mm -hmm. to take my life and use it as you choose. Yes, Father. I come against this spirit of rejection mm. in the name of Jesus. Yes. I bind you, spirit Ooh. of rejection, right now. And I cast you back to the pit of hell that you came Come from. On. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, I want you mm. to begin to release upon yourself the, the item that counters whichever one of these symptoms you had. For instance... If it is inferiority, I want you to release. Father, I now mm. release yes, Lord. upon myself Whew. a spirit of confidence yes. in you, Lord. I release your confidence upon my life. If it's a spirit of rebellion, Father, I come against wow. a spirit of witchcraft, and I release wow. a spirit of peace and submission yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. If it's a spirit of pride, Father, I release that pride unto you. Wow. And I will no longer defend my position because you are my identity. Ooh. I don't have to fight for my identity. You are my identity. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you. 
And I would, I would ask if, if there's some of you that maybe you didn't feel like the Holy Spirit had given you that revelation, I want you to contend for that revelation. Yes, amen. Continue to seek his Come face on. for it. Continue to ask him for it. Find some close friends and ask them to petition yes. the throne room on your behalf wow. for that as well. I want to just share this with you. I was praying. I, I, I had a, a young man that was raised in the church, born in the church, and his, his parents came to the altar, brought him to the altar, and he was five years old at this point. I think he was five. He had um, curvature of the spine. And uh, the Holy Spirit said, this is, this is a generational issue. You need to, to seek God's face and break it. Yeah. And so I, I remember they were up here on the right side of the church um, as you're coming off the platform. And Grandpa was there, Dad was there, and Uncle was there. And um, I, I began to pray, and the Holy Spirit said, ask the congregation to petition, because we're supposed to carry one another's burdens, burdens right? Right. So I asked the congregation, listen, in this next week, I want you to petition the Holy Spirit, petition the Lord to give revelation. The next week, um, I actually stopped the service right at, right at the end of the service, and I, I asked, did you guys get any revelation? Uncle got revelation. Talked to Dad about it. Dad got greater revelation. So we brought the young man forth on that Wednesday night. We prayed and we broke it. Listen, I looked at Mom and I said, take him back to the doctor and get another x-ray. Come on. The next day she took him in. It's a miracle that she got in the next day. Next day she took him in. And his spine was straight as a die. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling Come you. Come on, man. When you get this stuff, Break that. it changes yeah. everything. Wow. Changes Come everything. Come on, church. You feel that? I felt that right now. Hallelujah. I believe a lot of you are receiving this now. And not only that, but maybe you have the word in you now. Do you know how to pray and to minister to others? And that's our whole goal is to be used of Christ. Amen. So tonight, what a powerful, powerful series, Pastor Tom. Awesome. And we'll have Pastor Tom back on other series that he's mentioned. And I want, again, I want you to give them information on how, what you're building uh, in your webpage and what they can do here in the future to get in contact with you. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Tom Simmons is, is my name. Um, it's the one my parents gave me, and I kind of like it a little bit. <laughs> uh, the ministry is It Matters, Inc., I-T-M-A-T-T-E-R-S-I-N-C dot life is the website. It matters, Inc. dot life. Yeah. The reason I chose that is my life scripture has always been Colossians 3.23. Mm. Do all that you do Lord. heartily unto right. God yes. and not unto man. Yes. And if we do everything unto the Father, right. whether it's at work or play or whatever, if I do it unto Him, then everything I do matters. Amen. It matters to Him. Yes. So it matters, Inc., dot life l-i-f-e and uh you can get in touch with me there there's a, a contact um uh, uh, page where you can just reach out to me and come to my email and i'd love to chat with you and talk to you and and uh see god do some amazing things in your lives and and pastors do amazing things in your congregations amen awesome ministry uh, and i love tom and we appreciate him so much Listen, folks, want to let you know that this Cross with Clarity programming that we're doing, we want your input. So if you'll just put type something in uh, in regards to this programming, maybe some things you'd like to see or if you'd like to see it continue, let us know. Uh, go to uh, also our YouTube. Go to YouTube channel. Go on. Type it in. Cross Crash Tabernacle in there. You can go on then and subscribe. Please subscribe. And also put like, and then you can give us some response also on the YouTube channel. So we thank God for you tonight. Uh, we just want to tell you here at Cross, we want to disciple you. We're, we're, we're putting things together to do that. And do want to remind you that tomorrow night, 7 p.m., we start the 2020 Invasion Conference. You don't want to miss that. God bless you from Cross Tab, Cross Olds of America. Pastor Tom, I love you so much and thank, thank you, you so love much. You too. We'll see you next week. God bless you.